How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's currently 9.53 a.m. My test is at 10.30, so I've got about half an hour to get everything ready. Um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, but what I'm gonna do now is get the room ready so it looks nice, make sure the audio visual's working, and yeah, and then just get this done, and then I'll talk to you guys about how I went about preparing for a clinical skills exam. So let's get this room ready first, let's go. So check this out, looking all professional here with this shirt, and then, pa. They don't have to see that. All right. <clears throat> wow. All right. I think I've got everything. And in the in the line of view for the examiner, I think there's nothing weird that comes in. But I know I'm just going to double check here. So they can't really see much. I should probably close that door. But let's check our audio. The new recording. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> oh my god, why do I sound like that? Oh, look at the weather. It's raining. It's my favorite weather. So, hopefully this means today's my day. Let's go. Definitely need a haircut. Can't do anything about that now. This assessment is going to be a 14 minute telehealth consultation with an actor. Don't know what the presenting complaint will be. It could be anything from the last two years that we've learned. Um, so it, it could be just a standard history about there's just pain and I can go through the Socrates framework and ask about things like where's the pain, uh, describe the pain, severity and things like that. Um, but they could also easily throw us off with something like a menstrual history which is a bit more complicated. So what I did last night was I took, this is a Rocketbook Mini by the way, it's very nice. I'm going to be using it extensively next year when I'm in the wards. But what I did was, I went through and wrote down some of the highest yield questions to ask for menstrual history and some of the other more complicated histories. Um, so I'm just going to quickly flick through them now because I've got about 15 minutes left now. Um, and then hopefully we can get this assessment done without any hiccups. And I'll tell you guys about how I prepare for a clinical uh, assessment after that. So let's go. Now at this point, I went through everything I needed to and I was feeling good. You can see here, I signaled for one minute, but suddenly, as soon as I log in, the camera isn't working. This is the worst possible outcome. I started sweating. I tried using a different browser. It said it's a single use link. This went on for a solid six minutes before finally, I was able to say the words I've been waiting to say. Hey, sorry, one second. I'm just trying to get my camera to work. Nope, still going, exactly. And after another grueling three minutes, finally I was able to say... Hey there, my name is Zun. I'm a second year medical student. Alrighty guys, just wrapped up the assessment. Um, there was a bit of a mishap at the start where my camera wasn't working. It kept going to this other utility software and I was just sitting there going... Oh no, like this is so bad, like, we're gonna have to reschedule. Um, but thankfully they were able to give me a different link and I used a different browser and as soon as my face came on I was just so relieved. So I'm glad that's done. So the assessment consisted of a 14 minute uh, interaction with an actor, which was, which was okay. Um, I personally am happy with how I went. I forgot to ask a really important question which was about smoking, alcohol and drug history, which I don't know how that happened. That's one of the important, most important questions to ask. I think I just blanked out a bit, but that's okay. It's a pass-fail assessment and I was able to get through a lot more um, in terms of family history, social history, got all of that. So it is a little bit of a bump, but I think that won't really impact my grade. It's just something to remember for the future. Uh, after that, what we had to do was write up the presentation. So talk about, write down every information we got of the presenting complaint, past medical history, family history, social history, medications, everything, write it up in a document, submit that. And then the final task was to record a two minute video of ourselves talking about the patient. So for example, that would be like today we had Mr. X who is X years old and he comes in with a, a one week presentation of this and this, etc. And then you talk about each of those presentations. And then finally you'd uh, finish off by something like, uh, Mr. X is really concerned about this being something like cancer and then give them what his worries were 
um, and then yeah that usually takes up the two minutes I thought I would tell you guys a bit about how I prepare for clinical skills in medical school it can be quite tough because one um, you have to either find someone to practice with and then get into the character where you just you can't come out of the character and break the fourth wall and number two is finding a lot of patient cases can be an issue as well um, so finding relevant histories to practice with I love practicing with my friends we always find time to practice every week or so um, we jump on a zoom call and we one place the patient the other place a doctor and then we switch over and then give each other feedback but the issue with that is it's really hard to always coordinate times with people and there's always clashing calendars and and sometimes you just want to practice and say things in while you're just in bed you just want to practice and otherwise it's just really tough to block out a sort of two to three hour block for it um, so what I also use is OSCA. So OSCA is a clinical skills practicing platform that you can use fully online. So I'll show you guys a little bit on what that looks like. And I personally had a lot of reservations on practicing clinical skills online through a laptop, uh, not even having a person on the other side. But I think OSCA tackles this really well. Their, uh, their patients start feeling like you're actually talking to a real patient. And the way it responds to the questions you're asking, that, that, that AI, aspect of it is, is quite intelligent and I personally found it quite useful preparing uh, leading up to this assessment today. So let me guys show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty guys, so I've got OSCO open in front of me now. As you can see, it's quite aesthetic. It's got different patients with different presentations just as you would in a real clinic. And what I really love is that you can choose patients based on the exact OSCE you're preparing for. So for example, um, for if you were in the cardiac block, you could go system, use cardiology, and you could even choose a specific presentation. So if we want to practice chest pain, you can, and you can choose a difficulty level as well. We can just go one preclinical. So what you've got on here is seven cases just on chest pain. So if you've gone through all of that, you can be quite sure that you've got that covered. So let's choose one. Let's choose, we've got Andrea here. Um, and we can choose history mode, which means we want to ask questions. Um, you can even turn the patient's voice on, so, but I'm going to keep it off so it doesn't mess with our audio here. Um, so we've got Andrea Rossi, and they've come in with chest pain. And just as I would to a real patient or in a real OSCE, I would ask, Hey Andrea, what brings <clears throat> you in today? So this is assuming I've already done the demographics. And you can see... Andrea, I've been experiencing some recent chest pain over the last couple of weeks. So it gives you some information. What makes Oscar a bit more than just like a gimmicky chatbot is that Oscar is much more intelligent. It understands context. It knows now we're talking about the chest pain. So if I ask something like how bad is it, did not mention the chest pain, just asked how bad is it? Um, how about is it? But I, you know what I meant but it knows through context what I was asking. So the chest pain feels deep, like someone is sitting on my chest. So it also describes like a real patient would. It's not using jargon because real patients don't use any jargon. Um, and then you can just go through the, the frameworks you've learned in medical school, like the Socrates framework, like site, you know, where is it? Where, where is the pain? And hopefully Andrea tells us where the pain is in the middle, in the middle of my chest behind the sternum. Um, so it gives you a lot of good information and you can ask questions as you would. Oscar is really good at gamifying learning as well. You can see on the right here, it gives you a score and then it, it has things like your mark streak, your questions asked in your bedside manner as well. So it's not just some unempathetic little system. If you say things like, sorry to hear that, or sorry to hear about your loss, uh, Oscar can pick that up as good bedside manner and then Im improve that bar you've got there. And if you're ever stuck, you've got hints as well. And once you really go through this, I won't really go through all the questions now, but once you go through this, you get some really good analytics. So you get some really good analytics like this one I just quickly smashed out. So you can see the case was a COPD case. I got a 16 out of 37, so it didn't do too well. Um, and it also tracks a lot of little things that you wouldn't be tracking if you're just practicing casually with friends. The number of questions you've asked and how many of them were relevant questions, uh, the number of hints used, etc. And it tells you your percentile ranking as well. So where do you stand for this patient compared to everyone else who's, who's uh, practiced with this patient? So it gives you a really good standing, knowing where you stand across a wider group of people than just your specific cohort. Um, you can also get the script. So 
Remember in my assessment, I had to write everything up. This is exactly what it was. So it tells you the history of the presenting complaint, past medical history, family history, then you've got social history, whatnot. And there are more like detailed analytics as well. So what things I've asked and, and what things I've missed. So I've missed it quite a lot here. Um, and yeah, you've got some, you also do a lot of follow-up questions. So you can see follow-up questions and how you went with them, etc. Um, so this is a really good platform for you to not only practice your clinical skills, uh, but also get some really good analytics on how you're going and also practice with some follow-up questions for every diagnosis you do. So uh, if you're studying medicine or any other degree really where you have OSCEs as part of your assessment or talking to patients or actors to get assessed, uh, this is a pretty good tool and I would recommend you trying it out. There's a link in my description if you want to try, you get a bit of a discount. OSCE is quite affordable as well, you get different plans. so. I would recommend you at least checking it out and let me know how you find it. Leave a comment, message me on Instagram, whatever you feel like. And hopefully you guys can also figure out your own strategy on what works and what doesn't work for you when it comes to clinical skills. Because it's so different to your usual learn a le lecture, do an exam, clinical skills is connecting to people and asking the right questions. It's ultimately the skill we're trying to learn through these four years. So fingers crossed I get through it. Alrighty guys, I'm definitely gonna be taking the rest of the day off. Probably gonna play some basketball or 2K22 with my brother. Yes sir. Um, so if you guys have any questions, message me. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel if you can. A lot of you watching the videos are not subscribed and it really helps when the subscriber grows, the algorithm helps rank your videos. And so if you like the content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.